What's going on, my people? This is Von Keaton, your host for Black Training News. This is episode four of season two today, and we're going to be talking about the rap category, the rap genre, hip hop music genre, and how at one time rap street battles were innocent, but over the years they've evolved into tragic, deadly hurtful bullying marketing tactics um and they are a part of our everyday lives unfortunately so let's get into it rap street battles were harmless competitions between mcs that not only bettered their skills but provided genuine entertainment to the community they were in i remember watching rap battles on 106 and park and thinking this is okay. I like it. Um, I thought nothing negative about it. And as a matter of fact, I found it to be quite hilarious at times. And rap street battles almost always consisted of dissing the opponent, but everyone knew it was just for show and for entertainment and not to be taken to heart. Or so it seemed. Record labels once again have found another way to capitalize off of something that was once innocent in the black community and exploit it so much it resulted in the conspiracies around Biggie and Tupac's murder. One of the first major examples of a rap battle is often accredited to Roxanne Shante. The criminally overlooked star spent her formative years in Queensbridge, a New York public housing complex, which also spawned legends like Nas and Mob Deep. It was within these walls that she would hone her skills in impromptu rap battles, developing a reputation as one of the most ferocious lyricists in the building. It wasn't until she was asked by Marley Marl, a denim factory worker who occasionally produced beats, to freestyle over a beat that she truly entered the annuals of rap. The beat in question was initially lifted from a track by a rap group, UTFO, Roxanne Roxanne, whose lyrics were dedicated to an unknown woman who resisted their advances. In 1984, they made the mistake of angering Marl by canceling a radio promo show. So in retaliation, he enlisted a then 14-year-old Shantae to freestyle a scathing response in which she role-played as the Roxanne in question. The track blew up almost immediately, and although legal action led to new beats being created and some curses being removed, the resulting Roxanne's revenge singles sold more than 250,000 copies. The majority of early high-profile rap beefs and plenty of more recent feuds were sparked by accusations of biting, or in other words, heavily borrowing from or just straight-up copying another artist's style, flow, or beat. Some view it as homage and others see it as theft. To this day, it's a debate which is still ongoing. It's also worth remembering that beef can turn ugly. Although some feuds undeniably get personal, rap battles and diss tracks are an integral part of hip-hop culture, which are largely done either for prize money or respect. It's competitive, but it's ultimately about skill. Unfortunately, things don't always end there. The murders of both Notorious B.I.G. and Tupac remain unsolved, but it's been argued on countless occasions that their long-running beef, part of the East-West Coast feud which dominated the heyday of gangster rap, caused their untimely deaths. In a documentary released in 2017, Ice-T described their story as a tragedy that didn't have to happen and admits that he never thought their lyrical jab would escalate into real danger. The two rappers may be responsible for some of the, the most industry's most iconic diss tracks like Hit Em Up who shot you but their rivalry of serves as a reminder that these feuds don't always end in the studio the history of feuds in hip-hop dates all the way back to its beginning days biggie and tupac Nas and jay-z Nicki minaj and lil kim and the list goes on beefs like these are displayed publicly on social media and used as publicity tools, keeping rappers in the spotlight for weeks at a time during a pause in their release schedules. If you dig in and find out why these feuds erupt in the first place, what you notice is a spiraling story narrative that leads to a waste of many people's time and energy. Normally the root cause 
of all of the confusion isn't particularly noble. It's usually only a competition to see who can make the better music. Quickly spiraling into a back and forth of he said, she said. Simply put, the industry had devolved into an elementary schoolyard and woe is me victim mentality. Talented artists were gunned down for foolish and petty reasons, driven to violence by the greed and ego lurking in the music industry. Today, artists haven't gotten any more mature. If anything, it's only continued to devolve. And in a lot of ways, the audience is a big part of the blame. We as a culture are buying into the hype with feuds like Nicki and Cardi, for example, finding itself a trending topic on social media on a daily basis. Theirs is a beef rooted in the same level of immaturity and publicity hounding with arguments like what comment another liked on social media, the already known list I won't go into gets pettier and pettier as it grows at their worst feuds in hip hop can quite literally be fatal. At their best, they show the rest of the musical world that those within the industry still haven't managed to set aside their insignificant differences. The end result is it becomes less about the music and all about the image, further propagating the ego problem hip hop was born with. We live in a golden age of music in terms of our ability to consume it, thanks in large part to the rise of affordable streaming services and pompous live tours. Sadly, all this is lost on the newest generation of rappers who have apparently learned nothing from their predecessors. What we need is for rappers to stop using feuds as a means to sell records. Don't get me wrong, I believe their labels quietly encourage this shoe-throwing behavior by not trying to get a handle on it. But I think that people enjoy seeing black people fight. Yeah, I said it. Even blacks enjoy it for some sick reason. That's why blogging is a career, isn't it? Cardi, amongst other others, have argued this when they're not slyly promoting an upcoming project with controversy. She's mentioned that blogs only post negative things about her, but ironically, that's what they are given. What's my point? It's that up to people to stop supporting the shenanigans and the bullshit and buy music because it's good and not because it's backed by piping hot tea spilling. Have a good night.